Hey guys, what's going on? This is Travis P11. I want to welcome you back to the channel. Well guys, what you're going to see here is a firearm that is very special to me. Um, this was one of those guns that, as a gun owner, you sometimes run into the situation where you purchase a particular firearm that you really, really wanted really bad, and then you get it, and then you realize that you don't want to put wear and tear on it, you don't want to mar it up, you don't want to scratch it, you don't want to mess it up. You know, we all know that guns are tools, okay? We've heard that expression a million times before, but sometimes guns can be maybe a work of art or they're just absolutely beautiful. Well, guys, what we're looking at here today is a Breda 92FS compact Inox with the rail. Technically, it's the uh, M92A1, if I'm not mistaken, and it's not a very easy model to find. Now, I purchased this particular pistol four years ago from Cabela's. I paid $609 for it. It was $679. Uh, that was the original price on it and I, I gotta tell you these are very very difficult to find with this particular finish now don't get me wrong you might just run into one of these at your local gun shop okay but when you go online say you check buds or you check the gungenie.com you can find this with the uh, Bruniton finish or Bruniton however you pronounce it but without the rail okay so what we're gonna do is just go through a basic tabletop review on this particular gun I owned it for about a year before I ended up selling it to my father and part of the deal was is I bought this particular firearm because I wanted it for concealed carry. I wanted it as a range gun. I wanted it as a bedside defend gun. And it'll serve all those purposes just well. Granted, it's, it's fairly bulky and it's a little bit heavy. But as you guys all know, with the correct kind of holster and setup, you can conceal carry just about anything. Uh, so I went ahead and sold it. Uh, and then I'm buying, ironically enough, I bought a Glock 17. And uh, I bought a TLR light to put on it, and that's my range gun, that's my bedside gun, that's my so on, fun gun. Um, it, it, well, the deal with this is I just did not want to put any wear and tear on it. It was such a cool gun when I took it apart, and the finish was perfect, and everything was perfect. So this particular gun has about 100 rounds on it, and that's it. Now, I can wholeheartedly recommend this gun, and I'll explain why as we go through this review. Uh, first of all, let's check the firearm and ensure that it is, in fact, unloaded. Okay, we're good to go. I will be bringing you a range video on this particular gun, um, as well as um, some accuracy testing on it, just to let you know how it performs and a, and a disassembly and cleaning. So, like I said, this gun does belong to my father. I'm going to get this back to my dad uh, when I'm all finished up with it, although I'd love to buy it back from him if he'd be willing to sell it, but I don't know. So, first of all, what do you need to know about this firearm? We're going to go through some of the basic specifications on it for you to give you an idea as to something that this is, you know, this might be a pistol that you want to purchase, right? So this, again, this is the model 92FS um, M92A1 or M9A1, I'm sorry, according to what it says here on the slide. This one was manufactured in Maryland. It's not an Italian manufacturer. It doesn't have that shiny nickel plated finish on, like say maybe some of your Taurus uh, 92 uh, PT92s that are out there. It's a little bit different. Um, the slide, now according to what I'm seeing off the specifications online, the slide is a stainless, it's a matte stainless steel finish. Okay, so it's a stainless steel slide with a matte finish. The frame is aluminum, okay, it's an alloy or aluminum alloy, and it's also a matte finish. It actually kind of contrasts with the, uh, the slide itself. It's a little, I mean, they're both tones of, this is more of a shiny silver, and this is even more matte than the, than the slide itself. Okay, so you're looking at a 13 plus 1 capacity. You've got a fixed front sight, and you've got uh, dovetailed, you can say adjustable, but not, not like with a screwdriver or anything. You'd have to um, tap on them with uh, a punch set or a correct side alignment tool on the rear. Very easy to line up the sights with. This is the gun that I actually qualified for my concealed carry permit with. And I mean, I shot just, this thing shoots so, so well. It's unreal. Um, all right, so front to rear, what do you need to know? We do have the, pick, uh, the I guess you can say, a Picatinny rail on the front. I never did attach a light to it. I'm assuming this is a standard Picatinny slot that you could put, say, a TLR1 light on it or any of your favorite lights that uh, you like to use. Okay, you do have the uh, double action, full pull, or single action. You have a couple different options when you're shooting it, and we'll talk about that, and we'll show it off when we get there. These are the stock uh, grips. I'm assuming there's replacement grips out there. I honestly never looked for it. Um, I don't believe you can use regular 92 um, FS grips on it because this is a little bit shorter. It's more, more squat. You do have that uh, pinky rest on there on the bottom of it. And I got to tell you, you know, this is one of those guns that I had to feel it in the store. I had to grip it and see how it was going to feel because it's, it's snug, but it's one of those rare pistols I can get like a 100% purchase on. And I feel like I have complete control over this gun. Uh, while I'm holding it. I mean, I cover up like every little bit of stippling and grip that's available. You've got some fantastic checkering on the rear. 
and also on the front. It's really hard to show this off in the light because it's such a bright gun. Um, again, you've got your slide stop, which also doubles as a release. Now, talk about the function. Let's just pretend that you've put your round in, okay, your chamber, your first round. Okay, you now have a nice light. I mean, you've got a definite stop there, and then you have the break. All right, let's try that again. Show you the reset right there. It's, I mean, it's like nothing. We're looking at like less than a half inch for the reset and then pull. Now you can also let off the trigger and using the decocker, you can decock the uh, hammer, okay? Which makes the gun inoperable. Now I'm not saying this could not, not fire, okay? Any gun can fire under certain conditions, all right? But you have the option to go to a longer, heavier double action pull by flicking up on the lever, okay? And that's very, I don't really know what the poundage is on this, but it's it's a nice heavy pull. I'd say it's probably, almost feels like my, my Sky CPX2, probably the uh, 10 pound range, okay? And then also doubles as a safety, okay? So uh, you have many options with the way you shoot this, but getting used to that double action, single action trigger pull, that's one of those things that you definitely need to practice with because you might find your accuracy uh, changing as you go from the double action to single action mode. Uh, a few more specifications for you. According to Bud's Guns, we're looking at a dry weight of 33 ounces. Um, it says Novak Sights. I don't think Novak made the sights for this, but maybe it's just a Novak style. That's one of those things that, uh, you know, some of you that really know your sights might be able to give me some info on that. Try to get that focused for you. Uh, what else do you need? Now, the barrel length is 4.3 inches, obviously 9mm Luger, uh, synthetic grips, semi-automatic. And uh, again, a fixed front sight. So just an absolutely cool pistol. Let's just do a quick little disassembly on this, okay? So go ahead and uh, slide, operate your slide, okay, as if you're gonna chamber around. Uh, all you have to do is push on this little button on the back here. It's pretty much the same tradition of most of your Berettas. You're gonna pull down this little slide uh, release tab, and then after that, the slide will slide off a little bit. Okay, go ahead and pull that off. Let's take a look at that lower. I mean, the craftsmanship, the machining, this thing is just absolutely beautiful. It just, to me, it just kind of reminds me of like the Porsche of handguns. It's just smooth, it's cool, it's got great contours. You've got your all metal rails, three sections all the way across. Um, again, I just, I really do like it. Yeah, I know they probably use some MIM parts on this and some people freak out about that, but it is very sturdy. I mean, it's just the way it's carved and chiseled, it's just absolutely awesome, okay? Very, very cool. Oh, I do not believe that we have an ambidextrous um, magazine release too. Uh, nor do you have an ambidextrous uh, slide stop uh, slash slide release, okay? So that's something to take into consideration. If you're a lefty, it might be a little bit of an adjustment that you need to follow uh, before you can use this particular gun. Disassembly of that slide, um, you want to make sure you put a lot of pressure on this because it's not a captive system, so it will launch across the kitchen, which is what I just did. Again, guys, it's been a year since I've disassembled this. Don't worry, we'll practice a little bit before we go to the range. Got a nice, uh, nice hefty feeling guide rod and spring. Okay, it's definitely metal, steel, I'm guessing. Uh, we'll get your barrel out of here. You've got this little lug system on the bottom, which is traditional. You see this on a lot of your Berettas. Your uh, Taurus uh, PT-92 has a similar setup to this too. Got a lug. And so when you reassemble it, you have to kind of watch out because this can get kind of stuck when you're putting it back together. You don't want it to get locked into a, a downward position. But again, like I said, this particular pistol might have had around 100 rounds and that's about it. Check out the slide. Again, fit and finish on this thing is just excellent. I mean, you know, when it comes to, when you start to get into the $700 range for guns, for a lot of people, it's not a big deal to buy a $700 gun. For me, it was, well, 609 is what I paid for it. But when you just see the pistol in person and you actually get a chance to hold it, you shoot it, you definitely feel like you're getting your money's worth. I mean, nice, nice, heavy, beefy slide, good serrations on there. Easy to get a grip on for chambering around. Obviously, no front serration, so you can do a press check. To say stainless on the front here. A little hard to get that focus. But again, just very, very cool pistol all the way around. But you do have uh, the ambidextrous um, decocker safety on the right side. It's a slightly different design. And I know some people maybe that had some military uh, time working with the 92 in the field. I know some guys complain about it saying that they would, I think would accidentally decock it when they would whip it out of their, it's like if they had a chest rig going on or if they quick drew it and weren't paying attention, or if they pulled it out at a certain angle. So you might wanna be careful and just, you know, make sure that this is gonna be the kind of gun for you, especially before you drop that kind of money on it. 
But uh, in my opinion, it's definitely worth every penny of it. So, all right, we'll go ahead and reassemble. So again, it is, it is hefty. Now that's 33 ounces uh, dry, by the way. All I have to do is pull back on the slide, flick up your lever, release, go ahead and check the action. That's awesome, love that, absolutely love it. Try the left-hand side, decocker, release the safety. All right, good to go. So again, just awesome pistol. If you ever have a chance to pick one up for your collection, I highly recommend them. Um, just don't do what I do. Don't go into it with a mindset thinking that, uh, oh, you're going to buy it for an everything gun and you're not going to want to shoot it because you don't want to put any wear and tear on it. So enough of my whining and complaining. Going to be sad to see this one go. So we will get this one out to the range. Again, just like I said, after carrying it and shooting it, um, I did put 25 rounds of critical defense through it when I first bought it to make sure it would uh, load hollow points with no problems. We had no problems whatsoever. I did 25 rounds of steel case Tula just to make sure in an emergency situation that it would run steel case and it did. Zero problems with Tula whatsoever. And then I did uh, 25 rounds of just federal brass, which I believe is what I shot to qualify. Maybe maybe 50 rounds, okay, to qualify for my, my uh, concealed carry permit for the state of Nebraska. So yeah, just awesome pistol. Just. But again, the grip, I, I hate to see somebody go buy one and say, man, I bought one and I found out the grip was, was just way too small. It just fits my hands, all right? And this, it feels a little front heavy because you've got a lot of mass up here. But it's just, man, when you just, when you take it to the range and stuff, it's just awesome. My hands don't slip off the grip at all. I mean, it's it's almost, almost I would say, like a Glock 19 size grip just as a comparison. All right, and I've got medium sized hands. So if your hands are very large, you might have, you know, you might be kind of riding your, your pinky up off there if you've got larger fingers. So I'm going to take into consideration. So you do get uh, two 13 round mags. So you can run 13 plus one if you need to. But again, I think it's uh, more than adequate for uh, for what you might want to do. Say as a nice range gun or just a good travel gun. So there you go. All right, guys. I want to thank you for joining me today on this quick little tabletop review. A little blast down memory lane for me. I was elated that my dad actually let me bring it back. I don't usually ask him to borrow his firearms. I usually go through um, SS Pawn. And um, so anyway, guys, there you have it. All right, so I want to thank you for joining me today. Thank you for checking out the channel. Please like or subscribe. Uh, you can follow me over on uh, Instagram and Twitter and Facebook. All the links are down below, as well as over on gunchannels.com, one of the coolest, if not the coolest, gun websites out there. Um, I'm, I'm over there on uh, the Ordinary Average Guy Gun Channel, as well as the Caliber Corner, which is a Saturday morning program we do when we can, which is just a general discussion about guns. We have a different topic every week, something to definitely check out. And uh, yeah, I think that's about it, guys. So again, I want you to have fun. I want you guys to be safe. And as you know, we will see you soon out at the range as we test this bad boy. All right, thanks for joining us today, guys. Have a wonderful week. All right, bye-bye.